Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Me voilà assis, ayant du mal à tourner une vidéo. Le temps passe comme les flocons de neige qui tombent. Ils se moquent de moi. Aurais-je perdu toute créativité Je suis à court d'idées originales. Le soleil se couche, mais s'est-il vraiment levé Je ne peux pas laisser cela durer plus longtemps. J'allume la cheminée électrique, qui n'est qu'une petite source de chaleur glorifiée. Je prétends que c'est le froid qui m'empêche de travailler. Mais les chats, les chats le savent que c'est un mensonge. Je me couche toute la journée, mais je ne peux pas dormir. J'ai rêvé longtemps des repas avec des amis, mais je ne trouve aucun plaisir à manger. J'ai l'impression que je peux à peine bouger. Je me sens désespéré. Et cela arrive tous les hivers. Attendez. Tous les hivers. How's your mental health been? If you, like me, have struggled with feeling low lately, you're not alone. Over half of all Americans say that their mental health has suffered due to the pandemic. And as the weather gets colder and the days get shorter, many of you may be feeling especially down. But sometimes, a mood change with the seasons, it's not just an ordinary shift. It could be a particular kind of depression known as Seasonal Affective Disorder, or SAD. <laughs> Man, the psychologists are making dad jokes with their acronyms now. Also known colloquially as Seasonal Depression or Winter Blues, Seasonal Affective Disorder is a mood disorder that starts and ends at more or less the same time every year. If you're like most people with SAD, then your symptoms begin in the fall and they continue through winter. Although there are some folks who experience seasonal depression that starts in the spring or summer, though that is much less common. Now, seasonal affective disorder is technically not a formal diagnosis in the DSM, which is the diagnostic tool that American therapists use. Instead, it's labeled under major depressive disorder with seasonal pattern. And that makes sense because it shares a lot of the same symptoms as non-seasonal depression, like having low mood or feelings of hopelessness or feeling lethargic or fatigued all the time or a loss of interest or pleasure in activities, even suicidal thoughts. But there are some symptoms that are more characteristic of the seasonal pattern, like sleeping way more than usual and a craving for carbohydrates, which leads to overeating, which leads to weight gain. Of course, most of us probably feel a little bit down and eat a few more carbs than we should during the winter season, but seasonal affective disorder is different in terms of its intensity and persistence. It gets in the way of normal functioning and it sticks around for a really long time. Symptoms typically last around five months and subside only when there's a change in the season. So for winter pattern depression, you might start feeling bad around October or November and then feel better around March or April. And of course, in order to get diagnosed with seasonal affective disorder, you need at least two years of that season to identify a pattern. But isn't this strange? Why do so many people feel depressed only during winter? There must be something more to it than just dreading the holiday party with your second cousin twice removed. <laughs> we think part of the problem is light. See, during those colder months, you're probably getting less light exposure on a daily basis because you spend more time indoors and because the sun spends less time in the sky. And although that seems like a small change in the environment, it can have a huge impact on your biology. See, a decrease in sunlight can impact your circadian rhythm, which is essentially your body's internal clock. I don't know about you, but my mood changes pretty drastically when it's only 4 p.m. and the sun is already setting. Or when I wake up in the dark, I just 
I don't feel that great compared to when I wake up to a bright sunny day. So this decrease in sunlight can really throw us off and lead to feelings of depression. Also darkness and low light can trigger the production of a hormone called melatonin. You may have taken a melatonin pill as a sleep aid because, well, it makes you sleepy. Melatonin regulates our sleep-wake cycle, so when the body starts producing more melatonin, we feel tired and our mood may change to reflect that feeling. Additionally, exposure to sunlight is thought to increase the secretion of a different hormone called serotonin. So serotonin is the neurotransmitter that boosts mood and helps a person feel calm and focused. So it's thought that without enough sun exposure, your serotonin levels can dip, making you more prone to depressive symptoms. That said, there's not really enough evidence to support this claim. And vitamin D falls into this camp too. Vitamin D is called the sunshine vitamin because the body produces it after exposure to sunlight. Some research has indicated that, you know, if you don't have enough of it, that may make you a uh, higher risk for SAD, but more evidence is needed at this time. <sighs> Regardless, it seems like more sun equals less sad. And in fact, we can see measurable differences in the percentage of people suffering from seasonal affective disorder based on how close they are to the equator. So people living in places like Florida or Southern California have seasonal depression rates at around 1.5%. But in Alaska or Finland, where they have fewer hours of daylight in the winter, rates jump up to 9.5%. <laughs> but don't worry, you won't need to move to Ecuador to get rid of your seasonal depression. And even though your symptoms will go away eventually when the season changes, that doesn't mean that you need to wait for months and months until spring finally hits either. Instead, you could check out light therapy, which involves sitting in front of a light therapy box for at least 20 minutes a day. Now, this isn't just your average light bulb. Uh, these boxes emit a very bright light that mimics natural outdoor light without any UV rays. It's surprisingly effective. Most folks report improvements within about a week or two of treatment. If you don't want to buy a fancy light, you could achieve more or less similar results by increasing your time outdoors in the sun, or even adjusting your workspace to spend more time in front of a sunny window. And if you're looking for more support, talk therapy and antidepressant medications like SSRIs have been shown to effectively treat seasonal affective disorder as well. Beyond this, just do all the things that you know that you should be doing, but maybe aren't. So get regular exercise and eat healthy meals and stay active. Maybe even try learning a new skill. You know, like me, you could, uh, you could learn how to speak French. C'est vraiment assez simple. Tout ce que vous avez à faire, c'est d'embaucher quelqu'un pour faire une voix off impressionnante de sorte que vous semblez beaucoup plus talentueux que vous ne l'êtes vraiment. Regardez-moi. Je n'ai pas suivi de cours de français depuis la troisième primaire. Je suis sans talent. Mais si vous voulez échapper au désir existentiel de la vie et faire plus que simplement regarder par la fenêtre en pensant au nihilisme, alors vous devez stimuler votre esprit. Si seulement il était si facile d'apprendre quelque chose de nouveau. Attendez. Qu'est-ce que c'est que ça Skillshare. If you're trying to get out of your funk, Skillshare might actually be exactly what you're looking for. It's an online learning community with tons of classes about all sorts of different subjects like photography or gaming or fashion and business, even French. Now, I don't know about you, but I always feel the most excited and the happiest when I'm learning something new. And so lately, to cheer myself up, I've been thinking about writing a screenplay. Uh, I have some different plot ideas, but no idea how to actually write the dang thing. But on Skillshare, uh, I just started a new class. It's called Write Your Screenplay, The Craft of Story, Structure, and Script. And so far it's great. Uh, it's super straightforward. I like that there's no ads. The teacher has tons of great insights and it actually helps. So for example, I learned how to make a beat board, which is where you literally write down your story's different uh, moments on note cards and then you can organize them and visually construct them so you can see it in front of you. Also, the guy who teaches this class, 
Joshua Dickinson. He's got insanely huge eyes. That has nothing to do with Skillshare, but like, look at him. Oh my God. He looks like a character out of Alita Battle Angel. <laughs> I'm just messing. He's great. He's awesome. Uh, he's really been helping me organize my psychological thriller. I realize that most folks probably aren't writing screenplays right now, but uh, Skillshare has tons of great classes about all sorts of different stuff, like how to watercolor or how to build websites or whatever it is that you're interested in. There's even a class about how to take care of indoor plants. Like, for real, it feels like they've tailor-made their classes for someone who's stuck inside all day. So check it out. The first thousand of my subscribers who click that link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Now, honestly, you should join just to see everything that they've got. It's totally worth it. Clicking that link really helps support me and the videos that I make, and you get free classes, so it's kind of a win-win. So click that link and stimulate your mind. I know that I'll be spending a lot more time indoors this winter. And with the pandemic ongoing, public health officials predict that people who have never experienced seasonal affective disorder may start to have some of these feelings this year due to increased stress and changes in our lifestyle that keep us inside. So take care of yourself, get some sunlight, reach out if you need help, maybe learn something new if you feel up to it. Until next time, I'm Micah. Bon saisie.